with you all tonight. Please turn with me in your Bibles to Isaiah. Isaiah, the 58th chapter, the first verse. Isaiah 58 and 1. And as God began placing this on my heart, it was back maybe a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, ago or so. And since then, I've been praying about this. And God has revealed to me that it's a time to be preached. And as, as I looked back, I preached on a parallel message back earlier this year entitled Itching Ears. And even though I thought to myself this, there could be an overlap, I don't make the decision of what God wants us to hear, amen? It's Him. And so <clears throat> we read 58 and 1. And here God is telling Isaiah to speak to the people of Israel, Isaiah the prophet. And it says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. We're going to stop the reading right there. Cry not. God is telling Isaiah, to tell, your, tell my people this. Cry aloud, Isaiah. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sins. He's saying to cry out to his people against their sins. He says, spare not. Isaiah, don't hold back. Speak loudly. Do not restrain your voice. Let your voice be clear, Isaiah. Let it be full. Let it be loud. Let it be plain. Let it be understandable. Let it be strong. Lift your voice like a mighty trumpet blast. And tell them about their trans transgressions and their sins and the hypocrisy. It must be revealed to them. Awaken them from their, from their sins, their wrongs against me. Get their attention. Speak it not in a whisper. Let them know, let them hear. And don't hold back, Isaiah, because it might be somewhat uncomfortable to do that. Don't withhold speaking this. Let them know without a doubt that they are sinning, that there is sin in their lives, and it needs to be dealt with. You may say, well, Brother Steve, that's for back then. When there was lots of sin going on. Well, I'm going to tell you, there's lots of sin going on right now. What God is telling Isaiah to tell the people, he's telling the pastors and the churches and the preachers and the teachers today in this world to speak it out and speak it out loudly. It's the absolute responsibility of the church, the pastors, God's messengers and teachers to point out the sins. But brother, it's a different world out there today. It sure is. This world is full of sin. Not just sin, but sin that is being promoted, is blatantly being pushed out and saying, look at this. 
Isn't this great? Proud of sin. Thank you, Lord. And it comes back to pride. Pride of the people. Lust of the people. Missing the mark. What sin is. Going against God. And people are beginning to choose churches that fit their lifestyle. That maybe minimize sin. That have eliminated preaching about sin. Is that going on, brother? It is. I think we've heard it. I think we've seen it. The pulpit is minimizing sin. And they're eliminating a call for repentance. If they're eliminating a call for repentance, they're eliminating Jesus. And when asked about compromise in preaching, when they're asked about their contradictory positions on sin, on hell, on judgment. You see, all those things are real. You can believe what you like, but I'm going to tell you, without a doubt, judgment and hell and sin are all real. Here are some of the answers that I've studied and picked up on. And we're not only talking about the elimination of preaching sin, but preaching on everything that the church and the people believe are negative things. We don't want to hear about the negative. A very well-known pastor says this, and may I say this as a side note, he packs them in. What do you mean, brother? The churches are full to overflowing. You have to go, if you get there late, you have to watch it on a screen somewhere. My point is, they're very popular. And this brother said, most people are beaten down enough by life. Huh. Most people feel guilty enough already. We want them to come to the church and be lifted up. I know my brothers here and myself want the same thing. Amen? We want the people that come to be lifted up. But we want them to be lifted up in God's truth. Amen? Not a warm and fuzzy. If you came tonight expecting a warm and fuzzy, you're not going to get it. We, want, we don't want the people to feel beat up. Focus on lo the love of Jesus. Well, brothers and sisters, speaking about those things that are negative is the love of Jesus. Amen? Praise God. This brother says, people already know about their sins. It's no need to tell them. That's not true. Now this is certainly positive thinking. And this is called motivational speaking. The world doesn't want correction. Can I say that? The world doesn't want to be told what to do. I don't need a pastor to tell me what to do. Good, because I'm not going to tell you what to do, and the brothers aren't either. This is God telling us what to do, amen? 
Praise God. The world loves darkness more than light. Because light rep reproves and reveals our sins. And we're guilty of those sins. It needs to be revealed to us. Our sins, our transgression. What's wrong in our spiritual lives? Thank you, Lord, for showing me that I'm out of line, that I'm not on the right path, that I have sin in my life. It must be revealed to us that we're only sinners saved by grace. God's grace. Does that mean we follow sin? Does that mean we practice sin? No. We're born, our human nature, as a sinner. Oh, even that little baby? Yes. Only a sinner saved by God's amazing grace. And I have a few questions for you all to consider tonight. So, we've come to this point. Has the church changed? Think about that. Consider that. Better question. Has God changed? Has He? God has not changed. Has God desires for us no longer to preach about sin? Does he not want us to preach about sin anymore or teach on sin? I don't think so. Has his love for us, his warnings, his answers for us, are they no longer necessary? God speaking to us in plain language is needed more than ever before. Praise God. His love for us, His warnings, His answer for us are necessary. Are His instructions no longer needed in our lives? We're good. I've been doing this for 68 years. I'm good. I don't need it anymore. I don't need to come to all the services. The brother preached on attendance the other day. We need to be here. Why? Because God wants to speak to us. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that a reason to be here? Thank you, Lord. Here's a hard question. Are men now wiser than God? Are they? I think maybe some of them believe that. Are you picking on a denomination? No. Are you picking on a preacher, pastor? No. Thank you, Lord. We don't want to hear about sin because we're guilty of the sin. Further question, where does it say in God's word that, where, you show me, where does it say in God's word, you know, why don't you, God's saying, why don't you preach about sin for about a thousand years and then cut it off because that's good enough. Does God say stop, preachers stop teaching and preaching about sin and hell and judgment? He doesn't. So do man, does man believe he's wiser than God? Because now they're making decisions that are different from what the Word of God says. It's nowhere in His Word. It's from the beginning until the very end that we are to preach the truth. The word of God that was we read still says, it still says, cry out like a trumpet blast that man is sinful. Call them out on their sins. Why? Because I love them so much and I don't want to see them lost. 
God is telling Isaiah to say this to the people. Preach it out. Well, brother, we want to hear the good news. Amen. I want to hear the good news. But guess what? Preaching about sin and death, judgment, hell, is the good news. Amen? It's the good news. It, praise God. He wants us to get on the right path. Preaching about sin or not is not an option like many men have made it. It's not an option. Don't be deceived. Don't be lulled to sleep. Be careful. If Satan feels comfortable in a church service, if he begins to feel comfortable in a church service, we're not hearing the right things. Do you agree with that? Don't allow him to be comfortable in this place. And I thank God for this place. Praise God. God has kept the word as pure and as true all these years. And I'm thankful for that. And I praise God that for that. Romans 3 and 23. It's a very simple and profound verse that Paul speaks here. And it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I don't, I'm a Christian, brother. Don't call me a sinner. What does Paul say here? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all born sinners. Each one of us are sinners. Jews, Gentiles, Indian, black, white, brown, red, it doesn't matter. We fall, all fall short of God's glory. But we're here tonight to do what? To come closer to God's glory. Praise God. In 1 Timothy 1 and 15, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners of which I am chief. This is our brother Paul speaking here. Thank you, Lord. We all fall short of the glory of God. But he gives us a solution. He gives us a remedy, does he not? Thank you, Lord. Where would you be without the remedy that God has provided? Be lost and undone. God's grace and mercy and his great forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. Praise God. And God loves us so much. A church, a pastor, a teacher that doesn't preach on those what are deemed to be negative things is being disobedient to God and sinning himself. They have taken on a, an easier path. A path that includes compromise for the church and individually. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. How do you take on that word? How do you take on that verse? You've eliminated 
preaching about sin because it hurts people's feelings. It's not what people want to hear. And if people don't want to hear it, guess what? They might not come. And if they don't come, maybe that affects the amount of money that's given. Are those things addressed anywhere here? No. Preach the word of God. Full gospel. I love the name. Full gospel. What does that mean? Every word in here, every word in here is what God desires for us to hear. New person comes to a church and begins to come on a regular basis and never hears anything about sin. Is that right? I can't believe it is. It's not. Praise God. Well, brother, you're, you're being judgmental. You're, you're giving your opinion. Oh, no. No, this is not my opinion. This is God's word. This is God's instruction. It's not mine. Just telling you what the word of God says. You can accept it or reject it. In James 4 and 12, it says, There is one law giver, one judge, who is able to save and to destroy, but who are you to judge another? It's God's word. It's God that is judging. Not this brother. Not those brothers. The word of God speaks out clearly that we must preach the full word of God. Not adjusting it for the times, not compromising or eliminating something because it's hard for the people to hear and they don't want to hear it, not adding to it, not taking away, not having an alternate agenda. Deuteronomy 4 and 2 says, You shall not add to the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it that you might keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. You don't add or you don't take away. It's the pure, unadulterated word of God. Who am I to add or subtract from this? Because I think it's what the people would want. I think it's what the people would be pleased with, with which would keep them coming. No, absolutely not. Matthew 5.18 says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall be in no way pass from the law till all is fulfilled. I think that's pretty clear to everyone of what is being said here. God is speaking and saying, don't change anything in my word. Luke 21 and 33 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but what my words shall not pass away. They're the same as they were 2,000 years ago. And his word is alive. And his word needs no adjustment. And his word needs no changes. Praise God. And you just can't eliminate what you don't like. His word is yea and amen. A few months ago, maybe a year ago or so, I taught on or I preached on buying the truth and never selling it. You see, we've made an investment, we bought the truth. We love the truth. The truth is all we should look at. The truth is all we should listen to. Never sell it. By eliminating things out of the Bible like sin and hell and things of that sort, they're selling it. They're compromising it for something 
in this world. Where does it say in God's word that we have the liberty as a church or a pastor or a leader or whomever to choose what the people should hear? We have not been given the liberty. God gives the liberty. He's the one who tells us what we should preach. And he tells us to preach the full, complete Word of God. God has made this absolutely clear. And brothers and sisters, I count myself as blessed to be in a church that has stayed true to the Word of God. Amen? God is good. And He is faithful. This may offend some, but churches in many cases have become a business. What are you talking about? And they're run like a business. With strategic planning and marketing. And whatever goes along with that. And the use of entertainment to capture the people's attention. Well, if we don't do this, they're going to leave. Let God's true word change their hearts. Amen? It's, the entertainment's going to last for a few moments. Eliminating things are going to last for a few moments. Choosing a church based on your lifestyle is absolutely wrong. Choose a church that teaches and preaches the true word of God. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Restricting or eliminating certain things in God's word. All I can say about that is, how dare they? And Lord, let me never be tempted to do that. 2 Timothy 4 and 3, and I preached on this. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. This message tonight is to stand guard. We must all stand guard. The churches today are falling deeper and deeper into self-reliance. Self-dependence. Self-wisdom. I know what the people want. Oh no. God will tell you what the people need. Bringing ideas into the church that will tickle the ears or in the eyes to the people is not what God is asking us to do here. Keeping their lustful attention, keeping their attendance high under false pretenses. The further we move away from the truth, and you can sit in church every service, but the further, the further we move away from the full truth, the further we move away from God. And you see this nation moving further and further away from God. Why is that? They're not hearing the truth. And they're making up their own rules. God speaks to that very clearly. Sister, brother, would you come forward? The church today needs the truth. Simple as that. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. And as they say in the courts, or at least they used to, so help me God. It's that simple. Never compromising. Guard the truth with all you have. 
please pray for us that preach the Word of God. Pray for the teachers that bring forth the Word of God. That we continue to give the truth and nothing but the truth. That we continue to cry out and speak and preach the full gospel and tell people exactly what God desires of us. Amen? Thank you, Lord. May the name of the Lord be praised.